It's a big step, or rather a lot of different steps you take when you make the changeover from elementary school to junior high. So much is different here in this new school that many young people need help in getting off to a good start. In the next few minutes, we're going to turn a lens on this institution called junior high to see which steps can help you get off to a good start. The first thing anyone notices on the first day at junior high is people, lots and lots of people. Getting used to the fact that you are one among many and what that will mean to you is a part of making a good start. And what does this much larger group mean to you? It means happily that you will have many more opportunities to make friends than you had in the elementary school. It also means that you will be included in something big, a school with its own traditions, its own teams, its exciting long-time rivalries with other schools for academic as well as athletic superiority. You'll probably have your own cheerleaders wearing your school colors. And maybe you'll even wear those colors yourself as you share in the fun of singing your school song or urging on the team with your school cheers. But being a part of a much larger group also means that the competition will be tougher. If you've been tops in your class before, it can be a jolt to discover that there are other people who are smarter or more attractive or more popular or more skilled than you are. And if you haven't been particularly outstanding before, it may be discouraging to find out how many more there are ahead of you now than there used to be. But remember, you are still you with the same abilities you had before. In junior high, there will be more competition for everything, athletics, scholarship, friends, and even for class offices where only one can win. What you have to do in the face of this increased competition is hang on to your self-respect. In some areas, you may never be tops. In others, you may have to work hard to make a good showing. Nevertheless, you are worthy of respect from yourself as well as others, and more so if you face up to your limitations. Another thing you must do when the competition is increased is to become more responsible. It's up to you now to get your assignment straight and not depend on the person beside you. It's up to you to keep track of your gym clothes, your books, and your other possessions. It's up to you to get to class on time, prepared for the test, or whatever else the teacher has said the period will be devoted to. Since you have a different teacher for every class, it's up to you to look out more for yourself. Your teachers will not be able to spend as much time with each student as they did in elementary school. When the day is over, there won't be anyone who has been watching over you every hour to remind you that you'd better give some extra time and thought to a certain subject. No, your schoolwork in general and your homework in particular become your responsibility. This is your chance to show that you are growing up and can accept responsibility. Going to junior high may also mean greater freedom than you've ever had before. School is often farther from your home than ever before. There is more time for you to be on your own and more chances to prove you're able to take care of yourself. Within certain limits, the greater freedom of junior high will allow you to choose some of the subjects you will want to study. But a word of caution here. The course and the electives you will choose can have far-reaching effects on your future studies and even on what kind of work you'll do when you leave school. You can get helpful advice from your school counselor who is anxious to talk with both you and your parents about a choice of courses and any other problems you may have. And speaking of problems, they're bound to come up. Maybe you have to check out a certain book or magazine from the library. 
and you've never been taught or don't remember exactly how to go about finding it, don't feel shy about asking for help. Ask the librarian to show you how to use the library. I'm supposed to use the magazine index, but I don't know where it is. Well, Tommy, let me show you where it is. Maybe you've been given your first big reading assignment, and you discover that you read too slowly to get all your outside reading done. Tell the reading specialist or your teacher, you shouldn't be ashamed if you have a reading problem. You only hurt yourself if you let it go on when there's help available. Maybe your best friend of elementary school days has taken up with a new crowd and you feel left out and lonely. If this is a problem for you, take a look at yourself to see why you're left out. Usually people group together because they have common interests. If they have a common interest in talking about popular singing stars and that's not for you, be yourself. Find out what is best for you. Broaden your interests. Develop a variety of interests and you will gradually become a part of a new group of friends. You'll find many opportunities to develop new interests here at junior high, maybe on the school paper staff, or in the marching band or the orchestra. Or the photography club. These and other extracurricular activities are open to people with common interests. Among people who like the same things you like, you can make new friends. Friends are made, remember. There's no such thing as a magnetic personality which attracts others without effort. But there are people who make the effort to introduce themselves. There are people who make the effort to learn other people's names and use them so that even a quick greeting has a personal ring to it. Hello, Cheryl. How are you? Hi, Tom. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello, Mr. Hello. Fisher. Hi, Hi girls. There are people who make the effort to go along with their friends in what they do, what they wear, and the way they talk. And these are the people who usually earn a reputation for having that magnetic personality which is incorrectly thought to be an effortless thing. Of course, nothing smooths the way for a good start like knowing the rules and regulations which apply in this new school. Here's where your handbook comes in. Study the map or the directions for getting to your classrooms. Read the school rules. Isn't it silly to get in trouble over an unexcused absence when the rules plainly tell what is expected of you? Why run the risk of being caught without a hall pass when the rules show you how to get permission to be in the hallways during classes? How are you going to know cafeteria rules, whether to bring your lunch or buy it, unless you've read the handbook, or listened to the teacher when she was telling you, or asked someone. The point is, make sure you know what the rules are. Finding out the rules and following them is just common sense. So is setting up goals for yourself. At this stage in your development, setting up goals means planning for your junior high years a well-balanced program of study, work, and play no matter what job you do after high school. You will need to know how to work and get along with others. You will need to believe in yourself and what you can do. You will need to be an intelligent citizen. In selecting subjects in junior high, you should consider your talents, interests, and abilities. Those subjects which give you the most satisfaction may prove to be a lifelong hobby. Or more important, they may become the basis of a vocation. In any case, making the most of an opportunity you have now will serve you well. Make the most of junior high. This is a goal for you. Make the most of your chances to work with others in a group. Make the most of your opportunities to acquire information and self-discipline through study and homework. 
Make the most of your chances to have a good time with all kinds of people. And by all means, make the most of that source of information and sympathetic understanding, the teacher. Teachers like you, or they wouldn't be teaching. They will help and encourage you if you give them a chance, and if you show them that you are willing to try. In focusing on this institution called junior high, we have called attention to only one area which is spelled out in your handbook, the rules and regulations. Learning them is one step in getting off to a good start. Another step is to prepare yourself for increased competition, both by learning to live with the idea that others can be better than you are in some things, And by making yourself as good as you can possibly be, you can do this by becoming more responsible and realistic about yourself. Learn to see your own weaknesses and do what you can to correct them. Another big step in getting off to a good start is making as many friends as possible. And that means making friends with your classmates. And making friends with your teachers and the other adults at school thinking of them as people with families and interests and problems, just like you. However, the most important idea of all is to set for yourself the goal of making the most of every opportunity to work, to study, to have fun. Do just a little bit more than you think you can, and you will be off to a good start.